I always know one of these videos is going to be good when I actually get excited about some of the decks and like half of these I think I'm probably going to end up building so fun for me who's addicted to deck building not so fun for my wallet and everything else. But hey we're magic players we really don't care about our wallets too much so let's just jump in I guess I've got 10 fun commander deck ideas so if you need some ideas maybe one of these will uh, spark your interest. Idea numero uno, we've got uh, Rakdos Treasures. Rakdos, Lord of Riots, is known for dealing big damage and cheating big threats into play. This deck does the same thing, but treasures go burr. There's a chance when I sack this treasure, the treasures won't stop being created. It's also in the best colors for treasures, having access to the best treasure creators like Dockside Extortionist and Zorn, while Black gives us access to some good enders like Gary and Marionette Master. Seems fun! I give it a C in creativity because it's doing what the deck already does, just faster. But it does give you access to some new cards and new lines of play. We're gonna go with a solid A for power level, as Rakdos is already a super strong deck and throwing treasures on top of that, you know, seems like it could only get better. While getting a fun grade of B because spamming big threats and playing treasures tends to be pretty fun. Okay, Junji Schemes. We all know Rakdos Schemes in Modern, play a Fury for its evoke. In response, play a Death Defied card, keep the Fury. Think that, but with Junji. Run every instant that brings back creatures if they're about to die, like Demonic Gifts or Fake Your Own Death. There's probably a good 10 to 15 of these. Along with Sack Outlets like Ashnod's Altar, Altar of Dementia, Sack Junji. Play the Fake Death cards on your Junji, bring him back, rinse and repeat. Pair this with Junji's Drain or Junji's ability to reanimate a non-dragon, like, I don't know, maybe Gary again? Uh, and this seems genuinely scary and super resilient. I give this deck a B in creativity because the theme is not a normal one while still being a threat, which, speaking of threat, I'd give it a B again for its power level as it's going to get super scary. In terms of fun, you'll never believe it. It gets a B as well, for the same reason. If it gets going, it seems like a blast. Delina Weighted Dice. This deck is super straightforward and probably just what the deck does anyway, but it's really cool sounding, so here goes. Delina can make copies of attacking creatures infinitely if you always roll higher than a 15 on her attack trigger. So running cards like Barbarian Class or Krark's Thumb, uh, you know, lets you get more chances to roll. Like I said, this one's pretty straightforward, but it does seem fun, so I put it on the list. This deck gets a D in creativity because it's built exactly how you'd imagine it to be built. In terms of threat, it's quite literally got to be a C because it's random how you roll. While the fun level of this thing seems awesome, I'm gonna give it an A. Plenty of moments where the whole table waits for that die roll, so. Hamza Artifacts. This is a deck I actually have built, and I actually had an old deck tech on the channel for this video, but I took it down because I wasn't quite sold on the deck yet, but maybe you can do it better. Hamza can make our creatures cost one less for each plus one plus one counter on it, so if we get enough counters on it in a full artifact creature deck, we can spam creatures on the board for free, which when paired with stuff like Beast Whisperer can become insanely powerful. While on top of that, Hamza just makes our Crater Hoofs and other game enders just cost way less anyways. It seems really strong. This deck gets a C for creativity as it doesn't take too much to come to the artifact conclusion with this guy, while his power grade is easily a B as it stands on its own and pops off out of nowhere, while having multiple ways to win while its fun grade is easily a B as well for the same reasons. Saffy Chains. Okay, I'm really excited about this one. This is one of my first commander decks I ever made, and it's incredibly fun. Uh, Saffy sacks herself to bring back a creature you control from the grave the next time it would die this turn. Pair this with something like Sun Titan or Karmic Guide, and the name Saffy Chain becomes pretty clear. The idea is you run sack outlets like Altered Dementia, Ashnod's Altar. We then sack our Saffy, targeting our Sun Titans or our Karmic Guides, choosing to put Saffy into our graveyard instead of the command zone. After that, using our sack outlet to sacrifice the creature targeted by Saffy, the creature gets sacrificed and comes back due to the Saffy. The creature, for example, let's say Sun Titan, will bring back Saffy with it, then do it again, and again, and again, and again. For infinite mills, infinite mana, whatever your sack outlet is. This deck gets an A for all categories, honestly. This thing is super creative, powerful, and fun as hell to play. I'm currently working on a new build for it because I haven't built it in probably a good eight years. So I'm excited to see how the new version works. So expect the deck tech on this one in the future. Tabarax Aristotron. Oh, let me explain. All right, boys, if you know me, I don't like Voltron, but this demon's got some serious hear me out vibes. 
Tabarax is a three drop demon that gets bigger and gains lifelink the more non tokens we control that die. The deck strategy is straightforward, but a super cool way to approach Voltron, while as we're sacking, like aristocrats do with our altars to trigger our blood artist, we also have a massive commander that can one shot players and gain us a ton of life, so that's awesome. Throw some boots on this thing and it's seriously scary. In terms of creativity though, the deck gets a D, as there's really only one way to build him. While its power grade is an A easily, it seems like the normal aristocrats deck that's mono black, which we know is powerful, while having alternate routes to victory with its commander being huge. Its fun ranking is gonna be a C, unfortunately, as people either love or hate this type of strat, so. Tigum Blink. Tigum Ojutai Master is sweet. A commander that gives dragons, instants, and sorceries uncounterability first, and secondly, gives instants and sorceries you control rebound if he attacked this turn. Uh, um, what? This guy just reads extremely powerful. First thing I did was get some white out and get rid of that little dragon word there, and perfect. This deck idea is running all the blink spells we can get our hands on, which is tons, and use the commander to get to use those blink spells two times, paired with powerful ETB effects like Agent of Treachery or Moonshaker Cavalry to bring home games pretty easily. In terms of creativity, this deck gets a C, as it doesn't take much to get to the blink route with this commander, but it still seems really fun. And its power level seems quite high, honestly, as it's resilient by making our instants and sorceries uncounterable, while being able to run our own counter spells in blue, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a B. And finally, in terms of fun, this deck honestly seems like a blast, so I'd have to give it a B again, as far as I'm concerned. Faramir, Prince of Pillow Fort. Faramir is sick. If you like to sit behind a wall of protection the whole game and periodically poke your head out from behind the fort and yell, come get some pussy, his whole shtick is at the end of turn, we choose an opponent. And at the end of that player's turn, we draw a card. If they didn't attack us, if they did attack us, we create three 1-1 one -one humans. It's actually sick. So if our pillow ain't quite fortin', we just get bodies on the ground to start building up. If our fortress is stuffed with feathers, on the other hand, we get card advantage. It seems pretty good. Run your classics, ghostly prison, propagandas, and win however you see fit. In terms of creativity, this deck gets a D, as it does exactly what it's made to do. But what it does do is quite annoying and powerful, so it gets a B in that wheelhouse. And finally, the fun side of this deck is very one-sided. The player playing this deck will have fun watching the opponents not having fun. So I'll give it a C right down the middle. Storvald equal to damage dealt. Storvald bants in a way other bants just don't bant. For seven mana, you get a giant that can turn other creatures into either one ones or seven sevens or both. This deck is based around running low mana cost creatures that have effects that give us bonuses for damage dealt to opponents, like Cephalid Constable, which bounces creatures for each damage it does to opponent, or Cold-Eyed Selkie, which draws us a card for each damage done to an opponent. Then play our commander, turning these creatures into 7-7s, seven and yeah, getting tons of value there. In terms of creativity, this deck gets a B, because to me it seems like they wanted us to go all in with evasive creatures like Invisible Stalker, but we're leaning more towards damage dealt, which I think is kinda cool. In terms of power, this deck gets a C, solely because of the commander's mana cost. If this was even a 5-drop commander, I'd give it a B. And in terms of fun, I'd definitely give this commander an A, because turning your small creatures into huge 7-7s seven that deal massive damage seems awesome. Please don't hit me, but I have another scheme deck. The exact same thing I said before with Junji. You remember that? We're sacking him. We're bringing him back with the fake death stuff. We're doing it all over and over and over. We run that, but with the ever-changing Dane to sack other stuff with death triggers. Like, Junji would go in this deck, for sure. Fill the deck with all the best ETB and death triggers along with feigned death cards and go nuts. This deck gets a B for creativity, as it's probably meant to be an Aristocrats deck, but this is way cooler. In terms of power, this also gets a B, as a 3-drop commander that can get very powerful triggers seems pretty good. Also, a blast to play, it seems like, so I'm gonna have to give it another B. Let me know how you like these ideas, or if you've ran any of the commanders I brought up, let me know down in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe, and submit your deck list over on our subreddit at r slash nixlotus, and uh, yeah, much love guys.